of late, the internet and the social media is just full of success stories of animal rescue. I am usually overwhelmed with feelings of warmth and happiness whenever I read such things. Now, yes, we human beings have such advanced brains that they can do more than one thing at a time. Yeah? When a person helps an animal, they are still able to go to work, have a social life, eat, etc. People who love animals are generally compassionate and kind, unlike those who hate animals. Anyone who is compassionate and kind has certainly helped out an animal in their lifetime. And animals most certainly themselves deserve a much better treatment than they are already subjected to. Do you agree with me? The question shall be answered in the poem, Animals, written by none other than Walt Whitman. Before I tell you about the poem, let's know about the poet. Born on Long Island, Whitman grew up in Brooklyn and received limited formal education. Whitman is regarded as one of America's most significant 19th century poets. Whitman's first book, Leaves of Grass, was published with his own money. In the poem Animals, the poet tells us that he feels more comfortable with animals than humans. Let's read and find out why so. Animals by Walt Whitman I think I could turn and live with animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another, nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. In this poem, the poet draws a comparison between man and animals. He is of the view that man lacks many virtues that animals have. The poet feels more comfortable in the company of animals since he believes that humans are selfish, false, always dissatisfied. On the other hand, animals are unselfish, they are truthful, and they are more satisfied. Let's move on and understand the poem in detail by reading one part at a time. Okay? Pay attention. I think I could turn and live with animals. They are so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. In this part, Walt Whitman tells us about the many virtues that man lacks but an animal possesses. The poet expresses his deep desire to live among animals because they are calm and self-confident. They are well contented. They do not sweat, complain about their conditions like other human beings do. They, humans, you know, we try to grieve and judge ourselves for our sins, but animals don't do that. Also, animals don't go around discussing their duty towards God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another, nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. In this part, Walt Whitman tells us that animals are not mad behind possessing worldly things. He also says that animals do not have to bow to another of their own kind. They are equal and satisfied in their own being. Even their ancestors treated as the same level as them. He brings out the message that we humans have lost the true meaning of life in this fast-paced life that we ourselves have created. On the other hand, animals enjoy the true beauty of life and nature. He, in fact, wishes to be an animal more than he wishes to be a human. On this note, we've come to the end of the poem. It's time for me to say goodbye, but I will see you with more interesting and beautiful poems in time to come. 
Until then, keep learning and keep smiling. Goodbye. Tutormate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.